So today on the bench we have a... Oh. Try that again. <laughs> Without getting drowned out by the radio. We have a uh, SBE Console 2. This is a AMN sideband 23 channel radio. Uh, of course a lot of people always say, well what use is it 23 channel? And honestly there in this instance, you know, if you're talking AM, yeah, 23 channels you can get a lot of action on, on 23 AM channels because most of the AM action is low. Uh, but yeah, for sideband, yeah, pretty much all that happens on the top end of the band nowadays. So uh, the customer also sent a VFO along with this one. Uh, this is a Siltronics. Now, uh, just in case you're not familiar, if you have an old radio, don't go rushing out and buying a Siltron or actually any VFO. Um, the majority of your VFOs like this that were meant to be used with CB radios come in several different versions. Um, now, this was the correct VFO. Didn't work right, which is a, another topic we'll get into in a minute. But uh, this, was, this is a model 90-1, which is what you're supposed to use with one of these. The output frequency is, uh, what is it, 11.9 or 9.5 megahertz, somewhere around there. Uh, which is what's used on, so if you were to replace the the uh, highest frequency crystal in this radio, because it is crystal synthesized. Um, but like I say, so before you go rushing, if you have an old radio, you know, you get a hold of one and you want to use it on, you know, you want to use it on the higher channel. So, you, you know, get where the action is nowadays on sideband, you know, like 38 lower sideband. You know, if you get a Paul or a Siltronics VFO, just make sure you get the proper version. Um, now... The problems this thing had, it did work. <laughs> the problem was was the frequency it was putting out. It was, and honestly, I can't remember right at the moment if it was too high or too low, but it was off by about one megahertz. Um, and it actually looks like what someone had done inside of it was uh, right about here. I, everything's all screwed together. It's actually done. I'm getting ready to package it up for the customer to send back to them. Um, I thought, man, I'll just do a quick video because there's a few things I want to point out. Um, but it looks like someone had possibly just pulled the entire L2 coil assembly that has the CB trimmer cap on top. Then there's a couple of other uh, ceramic capacitors mounted to that. And that circuit, you know, that coil capacitor assembly then sets the frequency. I guess you could almost think of that as like your center frequency. So that's your frequency. Now the coil itself dictates the bandwidth. So, you know, on the dial here... The, the the amount of wraps on that co on that ceramic coil form dictate how far from one end of the dial to the other end of the dial, how far that frequency range is. And then the trimmer capacitor, it's now actually on the bottom, there's a little access hole, but that little trimmer capacitor you access from the bottom, the one that's mounted to that coil form calibrates the CB dial, and then the one towards the front of the unit calibrates the HF dial. Um, yeah, someone had that all screwed up. It may have worked fine for whatever they were using it for. I kind of, I think it was a mega, one megahertz high, if I remember right, because I think, at least with this radio, it, it put the radio 100% into the 10 meter band. You could not get into the CB band at all with this VFO originally attached to this radio. So I think someone was using this, with, which is, was common, and that was an easy way to put a CB. You know, if you're a ham radio operator, it's a cheap way to get a 10-meter radio. Buy an old uh, CB base station, get a VFO with a proper output frequency on this, mixed with the, the, you know, the other crystals and the mixing circuit in this, you can easily put the radio on 10 meters. So, you know, you could cover from 28 megahertz to 29 you know, 29.7 megahertz, you cover pretty much the entire uh, HF spectrum in the 10 meter band with, with one of these, with a radio setup. Um, but, of course, we're not doing that. We want to use this as a CB radio. So, yeah, and that was a nightmare. Oh, God, try you. Which pad, tr I had to completely rewind the coil, the coil form, and that was one of those take it out. I actually wrapped it the first time with too many windings. I do that on purpose a lot of times because... When you're trying to set up stuff, it's a lot of times it's just easier. Just 
because it's easier to have too much and take a little bit off than it is to try and, well, it's impossible to try and tack an, a little piece of wire back onto it. It's kind of like cutting a piece of wood. Measure twice, cut once. You know, uh, you cut your 2 by 4 six inches too short, it's a hell of a lot harder to tack six inches of wood back onto the end of it than it is to just cut it right the first time. Or if you cut it too long, just cut off a little bit more. Same thing when you're winding coils. Maybe add one or two extra wraps on something like that. If it's too long, you can always you know, take off a quarter, half, three quarters, turn, or however many turns you need to take off. But uh, like I say, that's so got that straightened out. Um, now, one other thing when you're using one of these, I highly recommend you use a, a good piece of coax. Now, it doesn't have to be you know, an ungodly piece of expensive coax, but do yourself a favor. Don't use something like this. This is designed for your stereo in your house to go in between, let's say, a tape deck and your, you know, your receiver. Um, if you use one of these on something like this, because they have that's what they have on these originally is RCA jacks. Uh, now, of course, you could easily convert this over to use BNC connectors, but uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with the RCA jacks; they work just fine. The main thing is the cable. If you go trying to shove the signal coming out of this through this tiny little cable, you might have four volts at the output jack here. By the time you get inside the radio, go through a jack then on the back of this radio, and then there's I've got a coax cable runs up to the or the crystal was removed out of here. You may have two volts of, of signal loss just in cables. These little cables like this are mufflers or they just strangle <laughs> the signal coming out of one of these things so i made up a cable i unplug it here it's just made up with a piece of actual antenna coax cable with an rca jack on the end so it's a real antenna cable with an rca jack and that's all you really need to do um so that's pretty much it uh, like i said i just wanted to cover a few little things like i say cable so important oh the other thing was this VFO would actually not work with this radio as it came originally. The output on this just isn't enough, even using good coax cable. I mean, you basically could have mounted this VFO straight down to the circuit board. It just did not have enough drive to, uh, to work with this radio. These radios, the uh, oscillator circuits, they're set up a little oddball in these. Um, it is an SBE. They did you know, their own things. Really good radios. Don't get me wrong. I really like SBEs. They made a top-notch radio, very well designed. But uh, their oscillator circuit's a little bit odd in this, and they require like 4.5 volts peak-to-peak -to, -peak to work. Well, this thing only puts out like 3.5 uh, like volts peak-to-peak -peak at the jack, and then by the time you get through a little bit of signal loss, even with good coax cable, by the time you get down to you know, where it's plumbed into the radio... Yeah, it just it wouldn't even key or receive. So I just added a little small two transistor buffer amplifier circuit. I know you can't see it, or it's just a little small circuit board with two transistors, you know what, three, one, two, three, four resistors and two capacitors on it. Um, and I actually powered it right off of this. Now, uh, if you do something like that, I'd highly recommend. Actually, I can. I even drew out the schematic. Uh, I actually sent a picture of this to somebody else I was describing this to. That's actually the circuit. So if you want to pause the video and then print that out, that's actually the circuit that I used. Okay, so the only thing different between this and the little circuit board I stuffed inside of this is uh, this operates off 12 volts. Um, the power supplies in these things put out about 16 volts or somewhere around there, so it's a little bit too much, so it's real easy. Uh, on that little circuit board, I just stuck on a 7812 voltage regulator, so no other components. No filter capacitor, no nothing else. That's really all that was needed. Just tack a 7812 on that board. Uh, you can pick up your voltage right off the DC jack on the back of this, run it down to the little board. The ground the ground terminal, of course, goes to ground, and then the output from the 7812 feeds directly into this. So, you know, but that's the circuit. So you have your input and then your output over here. Um, now, the one thing I will tell you, you'll actually need to lower the signal coming off of the circuit board inside of this to an amplifier buffer board like this. Because if you cram the signal that's actually coming out of this into this amplifier, you'll have somewhere probably between 10 to 15 volts peak to peak at the output. Way, way too much drive. So, uh, as you can see here, 
usually it depends on the radio, but usually if you add this exact circuit to this to a, a Siltronics uh, Model 90 VFO, doesn't matter what the dash number is, but a Siltronics Model 90 VFO, usually what you'll need is between a 680 and a 1000 ohm resistor in series. That's all you need to do. Um, and inside the VFO, what I do is, is the last bypass capacitor, or the coupling capacitor, that goes between the, it's literally the output, uh, you'll have that ceramic cap and then a coax cable that goes up to the jack on the back of this. Just lift that capacitor, the one leg up, attach a, either, like I say, somewhere between 680 and 1000 ohm resistor in series with it, and then shove the, you know, solder the resistor to the one leg of the ceramic capacitor, and then the other leg down through the hole where you pulled it up out of. And that lowers the signal down enough to where you'll get around uh, five, about five volts peak to peak at the output, which is perfect for driving a radio like this. Um, now, most solid state radios, this has more than enough drive. Like I say, this is a little bit oddball, just the circuit design, their oscillator circuit, they need a little bit extra drive. But uh, if you're using one of these with a tube type uh, CB, that's another thing a lot of times you'll find they don't have enough drive. So this little circuit right here works perfectly fine in tube type radios as well. Add this inside inside of the box, and like I say, there's plenty of room inside of here, and this circuit takes up about, you know, circuit board about that long, about that deep. It's really small. It's not very complicated. Like I say, you can see there's two transistors, one, two, three, four, four resistors, um, and two capacitors, a point one there and a point one right there, and that's all there is. And then if you add a, you know, a 7812 uh, voltage regulator, um, that's all you really need. So I hope some of those tips help somebody out um, getting them set up. You know, and don't be surprised if you ever get, because this is not the first one I've ever seen modified, um, don't be surprised if you get a Model 90 Celtronics or even one of the Paul uh, VFOs and you hook it up to your radio and you're, you know, holy shit, off, off frequency. <laughs> uh, you know, you could be bands off, you know, like a megahertz or more. Uh, very common for people to modify these. They're getting harder to find nowadays, and that's one of the reasons. They'll get any VFO they can get and then modify it to try and turn it into a different model, which looks like what somebody kind of did in this one. Um, it looked like the capacitor and coil stack in this was actually set up as a Dash 5. Uh, so, yeah, the number on the back, if you can find the right number for your radio, that's great. If not, you can usually modify them, but be aware... The Siltronics Model 90s, there are two different coil forms. There's a narrow and a wide, so that's the spacing of the windings going around that coil. Uh, if you want to convert, you know, one of the dash numbers over to a different model, you have to make sure you get the one that has the proper coil form, because you can't, you can't turn one that has the wide coil form into a VFO that needs the narrow, and vice versa. You can't turn one that needs the narrow into one that needs a coarse, coarse coil form. So, I hope some of those little tips help somebody out.